Okay, let's take a look at this Chinese diesel heater. You have to excuse me, I have a bit of a cold, but I, today is a good day to get this installed, so I need to get it done. So typically, uh, most Chinese diesel heaters come in a box about this size. Uh, this one has a brand name, a lot of them don't. My last one did not have a brand name. This has this on the side here, as well as on the heater. And inside the box, comes with a fuel tank and the fitting for the fuel tank, which needs to be installed does not come set up for that. A little bit of a challenge, I'll show how to do that. And then in this box, the heater and then all the parts to get you up and running. Pretty much comes with everything you would need. Uh, typically, sometimes I've heard of people getting shorted parts in that, but this one seems complete. I've gone through it already. Let's take a closer look. Okay, here's the heater unit itself. It is diesel fuel powered. Comes with a little LCD remote or a control unit and this one has a remote that can be used with it as well. These controllers can vary from heater to heater but typically they all work about the same. Then it's got the fuel pump here and this actually came with a decent set of instructions. A lot of them do not. And then just the rest of the parts. The exhaust pipe, the muffler, the wiring harness, uh, the ducting for the heat itself, little muffler for the exhaust. The fuel line, then the bag with all the clamps, screws, fuel filter, and then comes with this to direct the heat. So I'm gonna work on getting it installed. Typically these can be installed pretty quick if you know where you want to put everything already. I've got that kind of mapped out, so we'll take a look in the van. Okay, so this is gonna be installed in the front portion of my van up here. I do have some shelving. I'm gonna be installing some more shelves. But I'll have the bottom shelf just a little bit above the heater itself to give it room to breathe there and to suck in fresh air. So it's going to be up in here somewhere. I'll get that placed in there so you can get an idea what it's going to look like. Okay, typically you want to open it up and inspect the fan because generally there's some fan rubbage that's a problem. So this main fan here a lot of times will rub. I actually have opened this up already. Mine was rubbing up against the back here. I think what happens is they get shifted around in shipping and this fan can get knocked back. Regardless, the quality control on these are pretty low, so it varies from model to model. But um, the three that I've had, they've all rubbed and I've had to adjust it by taking a screwdriver and kind of prying the fan out. It pops out a little bit and then spins nice and even without rubbing. So put that back together. Some of these have little clamps on the side. This one just holds together by screwing on this vented cap on the back there. That's where the fresh air comes in, blows hotter out here. You gotta be, um, when you talk these diesel heaters, you do have to know that there are two air intakes. There's the air that just gets passed over the heated block to make the hot air. And then also the air intake um, for the combustion chamber, which all happens externally. So all the exhaust and fresh air going into the combustion chamber all happens outside, is taken in from outside, happens inside the unit. And um, this is just the air intake that gets passed over and the air that's actually going to be heated in your living space. Okay, these are the ports that need a passageway to the outside of the van. So this mounting plate goes on here and is screwed in. Some of them actually have little studs coming out. Mine just uses screws screwed in from the outside of this plate. So this plate fits on and you actually mount this part to the floor of your van, these four holes here, and you wanna cut the hole through the van just a little bit bigger than these tubes here. You don't wanna cut, cut the whole size of this plate because you need something for the edges of the plate to rest on. So you, I'm gonna be cutting a hole in the floor of my van. Oh, about that right there. Okay, so that's where I've got it traced out there. The smaller square around the two holes is where I'm gonna be cutting an actual hole through the floor of the van. And then uh, the metal plate will go down as it's traced out there. I will be cutting back the vinyl flooring so that metal plate is resting directly on the plywood itself, just in case it gets hot enough where it would melt the vinyl.
Okay, so at this point, there's really no reason why we can't just install everything on the bottom of the heater while it's still on the bench here. I'm gonna put the plate down and then we can even install the exhaust pipe and the air intake pipe. As long as we don't put the muffler and the air filter on the end, we'll still be able to feed everything through. Um, and I still have to come up with how I'm gonna mount and route my fuel line and fuel pump. So before I get this put down in the van, I'm going to have to map that out. Okay, so when it comes to the fuel tank, a uh, few things on how they've come for me. Uh, the parts for the fuel tank itself have been inside the fuel tank. This had the little fuel valve here, and then the two rubber O-rings for the valve, and then three screws and washers to secure the tank to a flat surface. So they were just floating around in there loosely, and at first I only had one of the black O-rings, so I had to further shake this and figured out there was one more stuck in there. So make sure you get all the parts out of the tank. And then there's two spots you can drill to put the valve in. There's little uh, protrusions, one on each side, depending on how you orient the tank. I'm gonna have it going this way, so I'll be using this bottom one here. So I need to drill a hole for that. It does not come with a hole drilled, which is kind of annoying. So I found that this size bit that's just bigger than the end of this valve here. And that way I can pull the end of it through and then use some needle nose pliers and actually thread it through some of the plastic. If you cut it too big, those threads will just be floating loose and could have more of a chance of a leak. So I'm gonna try it with this size and if I need to go up, I'll um, go up as needed. Another thing I don't like about that setup is now there's probably some little pieces of plastic shavings in the tank that could potentially clog up this valve here. There is a fuel filter, but if it clogs the valve before it gets to the fuel filter, you've got a problem. So I'm gonna really try to shake. Got a few bits out of there already. Make sure I have all those bits out of there. Okay, and I can already see trying to put this in this way that this hole is a little too small. So I'm gonna to have to go up a drill bit size to make that a little bit bigger. This needs an O-ring on both sides. So yeah, glad I remembered that O-ring there. And I think I'm gonna drill this a little bigger. It's just too tight. Okay, let's try to feed this wire through again. Gravity help. So that is through. So we're in focus here. Stick the wire through the small end there. That way when we pull it down, this end will come out and then we can try to thread it in. Put our little hook. Make sure we got our O-ring on there. Okay, and that pulled right through. Tip came through. So actually, I don't even need to pull that wire through in case I have a problem with it. See if I can start threading that in. Okay, so now that I have that valve pulled through a little bit, I'm just taking a pair of pliers and pulling out and turning to get that threaded portion through. Used a drill bit that was just a little smaller than the size of those threads, so it's got some plastic to grab onto. Made sure I had the O-ring on on the inside, and there's an O-ring for the outside as well. Try not to mar up this valve too much with your pliers. Probably best if you used a little rag on that valve so you don't mar it up with your uh, pliers. Sorry, I can't get a an good angle for you to see, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here. Let that bottom out. It's a bummer because you can't really see in there. We got a little more to go. Okay, so I kept turning that till I felt it bottom out and you can actually kind of see through the plastic. You can see that O-ring compressed in there and just went, just felt it tighten up and just went a little further. Don't want to tighten it too much. And then you've got your outer O-ring too to put on. And this nut here has a little indentation that that O-ring sits right in. So make sure all that's lined up. There. 
and we'll get a wrench and snug that down again not too tight you want to compress that ring but you don't want to squash it out too much it's probably just a little tighter than finger tight I might just go with my needle nose here to keep an eye on this make sure it doesn't leak you just have to watch out there's two of these on here and the way you mount this there's these big deep indentations that you put your screw through so if you want the top nozzle can't really see it if you want the top nozzle facing one way you would use this one i actually kind of screwed up i had two places one of them would be mounted this way one this way so i'm stuck mounting it because i drilled through this side so i'll show you what i mean when i get in there okay so we are working on the fuel line next the kit does come with about a foot long piece of this black rubber fuel line and then a coil of this rigid plastic hose. I've got a length of the rubber piece coming off into the heater chamber itself. And then I've measured and cut up to use these as little joiners from like the fuel filter. I'll have two on the fuel pump as well. And then running the plastic line in between. So I gotta make sure I have a proper passageway from the fuel tank down underneath the van to where the fuel pump's gonna be. It's gonna be on the outside of the van. So we'll go check that out and get moving. Working on the fuel pump now, I'm gonna add my pieces of hose here, remove these caps, and I've got it fitted into this rubber kind of bracket holder. It's supposed to absorb some of the shock and help reduce some of the noise. Uh, my last setup in my last van, I had it suspended um, with the zip tie through like an eyelet so I may try that again it's kind of playing around with this mountable zip tie here so I removed one of these caps already and quickly put it back on this thing has fuel in it I don't know if they come primed like that or made me think that this oh no maybe it's a return and someone's fiddled with it already so hopefully I don't have any problems just gonna fit those pieces of hose on Get our clamps on there, just using a pair of pliers. Slide that up there, up there. Okay, now this can be connected to the fuel filter, which I got going on underneath already. Let's go take a look at that. Okay, so looking underneath here, you can see I have my fuel line coming out through the floor of the van, hooked up to the fuel filter. So next in line, I will do, I don't know if that's gonna be in focus here. Kind of tough to get a shot underneath there. So after the fuel filter, I'll go to the fuel pump. I think I'm going to mount the fuel pump up against this wooden rail here that supports the box. We'll see. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and get the heater secured to the floor of the van here from the inside using the bolts that came with it. Okay, the heater is pretty much installed now. I've got the two bolts on that side. And then on that side there, so it's secured to the floor. I've got all my fuel line and fuel filter and fuel pump all set up underneath. Now all I have to do is just wire it up. All right, so here's what I decided to do with my fuel tank here. Originally, I was going to mount it above the heater here, but I decided to go in the front cab behind the passenger seat. I just took a thin uh, piece of plywood, a half inch piece of plywood, mounted the fuel tank to that, and that way I can kind of slide it in and out behind the seat. I just gave myself a little extra fuel line coming from the tank and then drilled a hole through the wall of the box van here, fed the line through there, the fuel line, and then going through the floor of the van to where the fuel pump is mounted. And then that black wire there is the power that goes to the fuel pump. I have my fuel pump mounted on the outside of the van, so it needs power going out there. And then I have the wiring harness kind of coiled up in the corner, running up to power. And then also that's feeding the wire to the remote, the control remote. So I'll show you underneath the van what it looks like there where I have the fuel and the power going. Okay, so here we are underneath the floor of the van. You can see up here the fuel line is coming out from underneath as well as the uh, power wires for the fuel pump itself. And I'm noticing I've got a little bit of a fuel leak here. I'm getting a little bit of drippage out of the bottom here. I'm going to have to adjust that clamp. But anyway, we're coming down here into the fuel filter. And then from the fuel filter, we're going over to the fuel pump, which I have attached here. The instructions say it's good to have the fuel pump at a 45 degree angle pointing upwards as far as the flow coming in and coming out here. 
So I have the fuel line going into the fuel pump there, and then the fuel line comes around here. I kind of have it wrapped around here like this to avoid being close to the exhaust. Uh, and then the fuel line comes right into the heater here. So that's my setup. Then of course we've got the exhaust pipe here coming down to the muffler, which I have attached here. And then we have the intake for the combustion chamber here and the air filter there just attached there. That's my setup underneath. Okay, so this thing is pretty much installed. It's really simple. There's a wiring harness that it has the positive and negative leads and then a place to plug in your controller module. So I have the positive and negative leads coming up to my fuse block here. I don't know if you can see that, that'll brighten up. Positive and negative going into there. And then the wire for the control panel, I have fed up through there, uh, clumped up with these wires here and then coming over to where I have my control panel mounted here. So we'll show how that works. Okay, to start the heater up for the first time after installing, obviously you need to have fuel in the fuel tank, either diesel fuel or kerosene, and then you need to prime it to get all the air out of the fuel line. Uh, some of the controllers might be different, but on mine, you press and hold the settings button while pushing the down arrow, and then it gets you into the priming mode, and then you push the up arrow to initiate it. And then you can just kind of watch the fuel line down by the fuel pump. And when you see all of the air removed and fuel actually in the line, you can run back in and push the down arrow to stop the priming. And then you're ready to just fire it up by pushing the on button. So I've already primed mine. So I'm just gonna push the on button. It's gonna to switch to on and go through its startup cycle. Well, it kind of runs the fan for a minute and then you'll see a little icon of the fuel pump and hear the fuel pump start ticking, which means it's starting to deliver fuel to the combustion chamber. And then you'll actually start to feel some heat come out of the vent. Okay, now I'm getting a little icon of the fuel pump over here and I can hear the fuel pump ticking. Okay, we're back outside. We'll let you hear what the fuel pump sounds like. As you can hear, it puts off a pretty good tick. And now you can hear the heater starting to fire up. It's actually combusting. It makes a little bit of a humming sound when it first gets going and then kind of evens out. Okay, on these controllers here, you have the ability to adjust it up and down. I have mine set right now on temperature mode, which Basically, you're just at the bottom end and then you can go up from there. So on this controller here, you can just hit OK and the down arrow and that'll switch you over to this mode here where when you adjust it, it has the hertz of the fuel pump, which is how fast the fuel pump is running, which in turn is how hot your heater is. So I have mine set up where the lowest is 1.4 hertz and it will go all the way up to 5.5. This is a five kilowatt heater, so it, that's why it goes up to 5.5. I have so far not used it more than 2.2. I've been in weather down to about 28 degrees, and uh, I find that if I leave it on the lowest setting, I could just leave it on for hours at a time, and it keeps me at a nice, comfortable temperature. But that's gonna vary depending on where you are and how cold it is, how well insulated your vehicle is. So that's my diesel heater. Okay, and that's the platform I built over the heater. So now I can still stack all my storage totes over here and utilize this space for storage. And there's enough room there between the top of the heater and the shelf there to have plenty of ventilation and then room on the side there to suck in fresh air. It's been working out really well. Well, there it is with my tote stack back up on top there. Not really sure how I want to handle the hose here. I'm kind of liking the freedom of being able to kind of flex that around as needed, tilt it up and down and that. So we'll see. For now, I just leave it like that. And when I'm not using it, I can pull that hose off and just store it next to the heater under there. That is my diesel heater setup and my little camper here. And here's a little look at my camper for those of you that haven't seen it. This is just a 10 foot box van. And I built out into a little camper, got a little kitchen setup, a little desk setup, pretty robust power system, 590 watts of solar, 400 amp hours of lithium battery, a little bed with storage underneath it, more storage in the back, got my little garage section over here with my bike, my mountain bike. It's been a good little mobile home. 
Okay, so I've got the diesel heater on the low setting here and it just pumps out nice hot air there. Even on the low setting. Can you hear it? A little bit of fan noise. Can still hear the ticking inside. And the way I have this set up, it just blows that hot air right across the floor here. Keeps the floor nice and warm on my feet. And then that hot air just rises up. It's uh, about 39 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. And I've got 63 degrees inside. I do not run the heater overnight. And without the heater, I think it got down to about 37 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It was about 41 degrees inside. So just with my body heat and a little bit of insulation. It stays a little warmer in here than outside. But as soon as I get up and turn that heater on, it gets right up above 60. And that's on the low setting. I could crank it up and get it above 70 if I wanted. But I think that's plenty good. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for the Chinese diesel heater install video. I just wanted to take a few minutes here to answer some co common questions I'm sure I'll get. Uh, where to buy these and how much do they cost? Uh, most people are buying them from Amazon and eBay. I bought mine from Amazon for about $170. Depending on whether or not you go with the two kilowatt or the five kilowatt, um, the price will vary. I've seen them as low as about $130 and that usually includes shipping. So they're relatively inexpensive. Um, there are some that are advertised as an 8 kilowatt version, which uh, has been pretty much decided that that is a 5 kilowatt version. It's just kind of falsely advertised. Uh, the biggest they go is the 5 kilowatt. Um, as far as fuel consumption, how much fuel they use, uh, and again, depending on whether or not you have the 2 kilowatt or the 5 kilowatt, you can expect um, if you've run it 24 7 on the lowest setting, it's probably going to burn close to a gallon of diesel fuel. Um, if you have the 2 kilowatt version, it's probably going to burn a little bit less. And if you have it on the higher settings, it's going to burn more. Um, I've heard people uh, with the 2 kil kilowatt version burning as little as a half gallon of diesel in a 24 hour period on the lowest setting. So anywhere from a half gallon to a gallon, I would say. Power consumption, yes, you do need 12 volt power hooked up to it to power the fan and to uh, supply power to the glow plug when it starts up. So uh, you're looking at probably about seven to 10 amps on startup for only a minute or two. And then it drops way down to usually around an amp to sometimes under an amp on the lowest setting when it's just running. So they're pretty efficient on the electricity as well. Um, as far as the brands and options that are out there, there are some brands that are becoming more uh, known. Levainer is a popular one. You still can find them on eBay and um, Amazon as well. And uh, the options seem to be either the two kilowatt or the five kilowatt. Again, I went with the five kilowatt. I would probably recommend the two kilowatt for most camper van setups. And uh, as far as different options, uh, they all are advertised with different types of controllers. Relatively, it's the same he heater. They just have a different looking controller on them. Most of them are all interchangeable and compatible. Um, and that's really as much as I have to say on them. There is a ton of information on YouTube on these heaters. Uh, there is a very popular Facebook group um, for the Chinese diesel heaters. There's a lot of information, people answering questions there. So uh, overall, I would recommend them. I think they're a great option for the cost. Uh, there are other more known brands, uh, Wabasto, Espar, but those uh, generally start about $800 to about $1,500. Um, so these Chinese diesel heaters are just a much cheaper option. So that's about all I have to say on those. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section. Hope this video was helpful, and we'll see you soon in the next video. Take care. Peace.